Okay, hi folks, thanks for tuning in again today. As you'll see from the video, um, today as part of our Art and Design Skills Base course, we are going to be looking at various approaches to mark making. Now, for those of you this year who are doing the NPA Level 5 in Art and Design, this actually contributes towards one of the outcomes. So it's really important that you pay attention to this video, take some ideas from it, and hopefully this will support you in your own development. Um, where else this is really important, it's a great approach in terms of starting to create new ideas um, for graphic design, for printmaking, um, and for various uh, textile um, design courses as well. So it's really worth a watch folks in trying this at home. Now, when it comes to mark making, um, really the words mark making just are exactly what it sounds like. You are making and experimenting with making different marks on paper using different media and materials that you can get access to. Now this doesn't need to be very expensive materials, it can be things that you've got at home. Um, and in particular, I'm going to be using quite a lot of household objects um, that you might take for granted today when demonstrating this um, to show you how to do various approaches to mark making. Um, and what I've decided to do today, I've got a nice wee sheet of A3 paper, I've just torn out a sketchbook, you know, quite roughly, um, because this is going to go towards sketchbook work, it's not any sort of finished piece of artwork. Um, but I've also taken other um, sheets of paper, because what I really like to do is to have that sort of contrast of different sheets of paper in the mark making, but to also give this feeling of layers. So I've got ranges of materials um, that I've got access to in the house, um, little scrapbooks that I've torn pages out of, kind of buff paper, um, sugar black paper, and I've also got some tracing paper, paper here today as well. So I'm just going to start off by, you know, just using a wee glue stick and sticking them down. In fact, I might do it this way. I spilled some ink earlier. Try not to do that at home. You'll ruin your clothes everything else that comes into contact with. So I'm taking that first sheet and I'm just sticking it down. As I said, I've not really put major thought into the position of this. I just quite like the idea of there being a little bit of space. And again, taking my sketchbook, I'm in two minds about to cut that off. I think I'll leave it just now. It might have a nice effect when I've started my mark making. leave that in and you know am I going to do it straight across I think I'll turn that round at a wee angle here it's just something a wee bit different again as I said I've got some black sugar paper here you know you can cut a strip um, and what I've done actually is I've sort of scrunched up the paper because I think it might be quite nice to have a sort of textured section that we work on as well kind of contrast the smooth geometry of everything else. So I've actually purposely scrunched that paper up and then laid it out flat. And I think what I'll do is I'll think about the placement of that. I think it's quite nice there. So again, that's something quite central to the piece. And again, it's highly experimental. I don't have an image resource that I'm working from. Um, I am just going with what I feel looks right. Now, there is tissue paper, but I'm not going to add that on just now. I quite like having that on at the end. I think it's quite a nice effect having sort of those opaque layers showing through. Now, um, what materials have I got then? So I've got with me today, I've got some black acrylic paint um, that I've put in a, an old cup. I've got some black ink. Um, you want to be very careful with that. But I've also got a range of, you know, soft white chalk pastels. I've got some watercolour paints here. And I've also got one of these. If you've got one of these in the home, great. If not, you don't need to use them. Um, but it's really just a wee cheap spray out of home bargains that I use to kind of spray water. I think it might be good to kind of make effects happen on the page. Or at least I'm hoping so. I'm going to experiment with that. Um, what sort of materials am I using today? Well, for mark making, it's really good to just grab things that are lying about the house. 
um, that you may have. So for example, um, I've got an old fork here. Um, I'm going to use that as part of my mark making. I'm going to see what happens when I use that instead of your traditional paint brushes. I have sponges. I've got sponge brushes. Again, really quite a cheap media and material to get your hands on. I've got your regular sort of paint brushes and large paint brushes that you can use to sort of do day tracing and about the house. Got some bubble wrap here, just wee scraps of it. Um, toilet roll tubes, I'm sure you have plenty of those with the lockdown kicking about your house. Um, I've also got some masking tape. In fact, I might even start off by putting some masking tape on it. Um, this is quite good to use as like straight edges in your work to reinforce it if you are going to be putting on any sort of ink you can peel that off carefully at the end and it will be a nice effect again not thinking too much about it just now just trying to create a mark making a, a nice layered built up uh, page through investigating materials. I've also got one of these, it's a palette knife, it's quite good for mixing but if you've got a regular knife at home, um, not anything sharp obviously, um, but any sort of butter knife in the house that you could use um, for using for your mark making, that's beneficial as well. Um, and I think the last material that I'm going to maybe consider using today is the tin foil. Now I'm not adding tin foil to the page, I'm going to use the tin foil for mark making. So I think the first media I'm going to use today is just a plastic fork um, and I'm going to just basically put the fork into my black acrylic paste and then I'm just putting some marks on the page, not thinking too much about it, maybe starting off with some straight lines and then some wavy lines what happens again what happens if you put it on and then brush it out and it creates a nice sort of textural effect to once we're finished to kind of keep a note of what bit did what because you might want to experiment with certain techniques in later artwork and if you can't remember what media you used to do it that's obviously quite irritating. Um, I've now got my sponge so I'm going to take a bit of my sponge and just as you would do dab an effect. You can do it quite built up in areas or you could do it quite spread apart, lightly dabbing, changing the direction. Again, you're literally just putting marks on a page. You're not thinking too much about anything. some bubble wrap so I'm just going to dip that bubble wrap into the acrylic hopefully I get a good amount on there and we're kind of using that as a bit of a print so the first one had quite a lot on don't know if that was as successful as I would want it to be Be a bit more interested. So it starts to get a bit of a grungy feel to it. Then looking at the palette knife. So again, I'm still using the one media, but using a range of materials. So I've now got the palette knife, and I want to see the effect of putting that on the paper. So, and there. 
say it so fast. Black blood blood. Quite a smooth texture, but quite good if you were building up layers with that. Right, so I've decided that what I'm going to do is scrunch up my um, tin foil, and I'm going to use this as a sort of stamper. on the black paper so I might start off by gently rubbing bring up those nice creases that I've created by scrunching the paper and then I might extend this by doing some marks on the other surfaces to see the effects of that Consciously wanting to go up against where the masking tape is because when you pull that off, I'm hoping that it'll be just a nice straight edge. going to choose to do a bit of the ink so I'm going to try just dropping a bit of the ink into the black paper so if you have a straw it would be quite good to sort of blow that one where I'm serious, but I'm going to go back to the wee pot and try and make them look like a bowl. making decisions if you feel your piece you want to do more of a certain piece in areas. And then the last thing that I would like to add to this I think would be the tracing paper. So I'm just going to take a sheet out of the tracing paper. And decide 
eggs or in fats, I fill it with white batter and I'm going to heat up because I'm not looking for it to be completely clean. But I can see some areas of this that it would work really quite well. I'm going to add some oil to that. See the mark starting to show through and it's taking another dimension to the artwork. There you go, a very grungy, mark making based artwork. And you can see once this is dry, how this could possibly be scanned in to Photoshop, the Illustrator, and then you can start manipulating it further. You could drop that in, for example, to textile design. Um, you might then use it to manipulate as a background for some sort of illustration um, or graphic design purpose. So, Mark making is a way in which we can experiment with media, discover different properties of the materials um, and enable us to come up with new fresh ideas where you are inspired simply by the marks you're making on the page. Um, and as I said before, this would cover your NPA level 5, this would co contribute towards the outcome of mark making and experimenting with um, materials into mixed media. Um, but it would also help you generate new ideas that you could then develop further in um, that particular outcome. Um, so I hope this has helped you for those of you who are doing mark making and mixed media. Um, my final advice would be um, on a separate sheet um, to simply make marks with the individual materials that you've used. Um, just for the point of reference of knowing what materials has made what effect if you wanted to try this experiment again um, and therefore you could just simply annotate what materials that you've used and what media um, and you could apply that to your sketchbook work. Okay, thanks.